Good evening, and welcome to Ridgecrest Talk. I'm Al Huey, along with my partner, Robert Ironman, uh, recently returning from uh, his uh, approved vacation, which nobody told me about, but anyway. And our special guest tonight, again, the mayor, Ms. Peggy Breeden. Thank you for thank being you. with us. Thank you, Peggy. Thank you, gentlemen, for having me, and thank you all for watching. Uh, we've noticed uh, since, you know, before you came mayor, it was really easy to get a hold of you and talk to you. And since you've become mayor, it's kind of hard to get a hold of you. Why is that? It uh, could be because I have a 60-hour a week full-time job, and I seem to have a 180-hour a week full-time job as mayor. But uh, it's not impossible. You've got my phone I know, numbers. I know, I know. But, but nonetheless, there are more things to do in my life. I can remember when I actually had a life. So. <laughs> well, and i got to interject. Actually, even with your horrendously busy schedule, you are easier to get a hold of and to speak with than our former mayor. Can't address that. I only I know what I can do. I didn't ask you to address it. I'm, that's just my vantage point. I can appreciate your vantage point, sir. Uh, and speaking of previous councils compared to this council, one thing I want to commend the council on you in, uh, in particular, uh, <clears throat> and Robert and I were talking about this, is the transparency of being able to get information for you and other council members who are willing to talk to the public, the media, ourselves. Uh, it's been fantastic. And I just want to commend you and the rest of the council on being so open with us. I, I appreciate that. Uh, it doesn't come just from the council, though. It comes from the people who are willing to listen to you when you, when they ask you a question. I was quite, I told you guys the first time I ever came on this show, I thought I was going to throw up the whole time <laughs> during the show because I was so nervous. And you've made it easy for people like me, novices like me, to do this. But it makes it also easier when you're talking to people you know and some you don't know because they're not there to attack you. They're not there to accuse you. They're only there to listen and offer their opinion. And I have learned a lot. I really did. I came in thinking, I'm going to make this change, and I'm going to do this change, and I'm going to make this better, and this is going to be different. It may be worse, but it's going to be different. Mm -hmm. And as you know, I, when, one of the first things when I asked is, can we go to one council meeting a month yeah, to see? Yeah, that didn't and go I, too good. I, <laughs> Well, when I saw what we did at one council meeting, and I'm thinking, holy, sorry, holy Lord, <laughs> we're never going to get that done. We're, we can't do it in one council meeting. To me, it freed up staff to look for other things that we weren't able to address as um, quickly as I would like to have seen addressed. And I thought that that would be a good opportunity. And, it, and, and when I served on the water district, we would have meetings that would go until 11 or 12 o'clock at night. And because of the committee, so much work was done in committee when you brought it to council, at that time when you brought it to um, the board members, you were able to discuss it more fully based on a lot of knowledge that both the committee and the other members reading from the committee reports were able to learn. I thought this would be a good way for us to do it at the council. Again, marvelous idea. Didn't work out very well. I wouldn't so give up on I that learned. idea, but uh, I, I think I shared with you, I had a friend that I uh, met in <coughs> Oklahoma working for the FAA. We go to Oklahoma for the training. <coughs> he was an instructor there, but he also got elected to the school board there, uh, along with two others. They ran as a three-party uh, or three-candidate uh, uh, group, and they got elected. Uh, they cleaned house, and then uh, they said, their meetings would be over by 9 o'clock, or they would have to return the following night to finish. And I happened to be there uh, attending a class, and uh, I attended their school board meeting. And that particular night, it was getting approaching 9 o'clock, and there was like one last agenda item, and the guy was just speed reading <laughs> through that thing <laughs> so that they could get through it and make sure that they got out of there by 9 o'clock. They didn't want to have to come back the following night. So. Yeah. Things can be done, you know, you just, you got to hold to your, uh... I, I think that you should take the opposite approach. 
I think that until things um, are determined to be so smooth that you can go to one meeting a month, I think you should go to four meetings a month. <laughs> and the reason I say that is because many things that, that uh, are very important that get discussed, we still have meetings that go quite late. And so that to me says um, that you don't, don't have enough time. So I think you should consider going That's to something to look at meeting once a week. I would wonder what all of us. I I <coughs> I Again, know you folks, all. All letters and emails go to Robert right. Iron. <laughs> and, and, <laughs> and I w would completely recognize that that would be almost too much of a burden for yourself and the other council members. I would purport, however, that it would be easier for staff because there's. You know, they don't have to worry about um, getting stuff as far in advance because every Wednesday night they're going to meet. Um, and if you had it to where every Wednesday night the meeting only took, you know, an hour, well, then maybe you could talk about going back to twice a month. But I think that you'd find that you'll still be yeah, there. It might motiv motivate the staff, you know. Football, you know, uh, if you don't There's do no well, Wednesday you have – so many more practices during the summer, you know, two, three, four practices a day. Yes. And, and if you get it right, then, okay, we can cut down to three or we're down to two practices a day. <laughs> so anyway, I just thought that I would interject Thank you that. for that marvelous advice. I, don't <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't want your job, nor would I want the job of a councilman, but you guys all signed up for it. We did. Yeah. So We did. And, and I think... Um, we have all learned a lot from it. I can, I can, I know some of the, some of us knew some. Mike and Lori and Jim all had previous knowledge, and but, but both Eddie and I, we came into this as novices, and I think we have learned amazing things. Each of us had our areas of expertise beforehand, but we've learned a lot. I know we have. We've talked about how much we didn't know. And, yeah. and how much more we have to learn. So well, we're just about up on our uh, first break here in, in another few seconds, but uh, when we come back, I'd like to talk to you about economic development. We okay. had a town, town hall meeting recently, and then everybody went off to their corners to work on different parts of that uh, mm -hmm. econ uh, uh, economic development. We created seven different... Seven Committees. Uh, committees, mm -hmm. right, that will all... And I don't report. know if all the work's done yet, but it sounds like coming, you got a little bit of information. We're coming close. Okay. We're coming close. All right, we we're going to take our break. Uh, join us on the other side while we allow some people to pay our bills here. We'll be right back. And welcome back to the Thursday evening edition of Ridgecrest Talk. I'm Robert Ironman, along with my partner Al Huey. And we're honored again this evening to have Mayor Peggy Breeden with us. And uh, I, I wanted to point out, remember, we're hard on the issues, but soft, soft on, on the, the people. people. Um, so you were going to talk uh, about economic development. Yes. Um, there was a town hall meeting here about three weeks ago. <clears throat> you know, it's been more than that We Yeah. It's about six weeks ago. Oh, okay. It was the, six weeks ago. the second week in June, I believe. Okay. Second week in June. And uh, we were hoping maybe you could uh, share with us any updates because we had the town hall meeting where everybody came in and threw ideas into the hat, and then committees were created and they went off and did their work. Yeah. <clears throat> we had uh, Cedric Knight was a moderator for the forum, and he gave us. A lot of opportunity to talk about what are the hindrances to economic development and what are the advantages we have to economic development. We came up with about 22 of one in 24, I believe it was, of the second group, and there were more hindrances than there were uh, advantages. But in f it was amazing when we started uh, talking about the talking about them at that town hall meeting. Some of the hindrances were not hindrances at all, but simply opportunities we'd never taken advantage of. 
And so I asked Cedric if he could somehow compile those 46, I believe it was, 44, whatever they were, um, comments into committees that could be looked at. And he said, I'll take a, I'll take a stab at it, but then I want you guys to look at it. Well, when I looked at it, I said, he got it down to seven committees and he put all those different um, comments and in each of those committees, and I'm gonna try to do this from my head, there was infrastructure, economic incentives, um, natural resources, marketing. I'm gonna miss one of them because obviously the seventh one was the committee that was going to take all the, and I'm gonna call it white paper reports from each of the committees and bring it into one easily usable document and and share with council and others that may be interested in economic development in the community. Tourism was one of them. Yeah, tourism was the one on the marketing. Um, but I can't remember, I'm missing one, so if, committee, whoever that is, forgive me. And uh, they've all been meeting. We gave them eight weeks to come back because we didn't want this to go on forever. Nobody want, wants mm -hmm. to work on a committee forever. And I believe economic development is almost done. Uh, natural resources, uh, that's one of the committees I sat on that, uh, oh, the other one was the sovereign nation, sovereign, it was sovereign. I can't remember How exactly. to deal with the uh, How to deal different with all government the governments. agencies. Yes, that was the one I was missing. So, and Gary Parsons is the chair of that. And um, we had a first meeting. I sat on that because I was part of the government. And I really, not exactly sure where we're going to go on that one, but the other one, uh, the uh, natural resources, the two items that we were able to narrow everything down was water and solar. And how we could do those kind of things, how we could work and use those two items as, as tools or recognizing the hindrances and try to work around economic development around those things. One of the ideas I believe that you brought to the table either during or before the economic development town hall meeting was uh, annexing out to 395. Mm -hmm. uh, any update on that? I have put, put a proposal and again it is proposal is too strong a term for it but an idea out. I definitely want to annex out to 395. I think there's economic opportunities there. The city has a small footprint. We are so far away from tourist travel, people just going up and down the mm -hmm. road. Mm -hmm. And w even though we have huge, um, I, for, to me, it's mammoth the amount of money that's coming in from TOT um, and a transit occup occupancy tax say that in English folks um, <laughs> and and it's a lot of numbers but I look at other communities like Mammoth who have I went up there to see they have a lot of tourists in there a lot of information and their their TOT tax includes money spent on food and restaurants money's spent on tourist related items I was I was very surprised when I went in and ordered a um, a bear claw at shots and and a cup of coffee and paid a TOT tax on it hmm. and I'm thought oh my goodness now well, I don't know whether that's a good thing how, how do they know if you're a local or it doesn't you you all everybody are, pays everybody even the locals pay, even the locals okay pay. All right. well I, I did they didn't ask to see my driver's license so I assume everybody it's pays. kind of like I going out to the county dump they don't ask you if you're county or city that's true <laughs> But then they come back and rag on you, say the city's not meeting this. Right. <laughs> but, one one but of the things that, that I think is a hugely missed opportunity, and, and you kind of brought this up, you said all the, like three, over three million people drive um, 14 or, or 395 and don't even know Ridgecrest is here. Exactly. The number I gave, I have since modified it down a little bit okay. because I've done more research. All right, but whatever found, number but it, it is, is, it's a large they number. They don't know. People go by. 
I can recall when I first, I owned a produce company in Victorville and served produce all the way up to Mammoth. And I would see this town called Ridgecrest and I got off the highway there, drove in and I came in, I, I got off down on China Lake Boulevard and drove and drove and it seemed like, my Lord, I've driven forever and there's no community I can see. And granted this was uh, almost 35 years ago and maybe a little more than that. And, but it's and, still the same and today. It's, and it's still, I, so I turned around and went back. I understand. And so, so my point is, <clears throat> just exactly. we, we should have huge billboards, series of billboards. Um, no, we got a billboard out there. I, I a think a we need a footprint of businesses out there well, on 395. Of course, that's even better. But in the meantime, we need the billboards. We need the information. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Inukern has a billboard on 14, but mm -hmm. Ridgecrest doesn't. So wherever their whatever private property they're using. We should use also. I don't disagree. When we I get back that. from break, we're going to talk about that. Unfortunately okay, okay. or fortunately, we have to take another break. Join us right after the break. And welcome back to our third segment here on Ridgecrest Talk, Thursday evening edition. Um, I'm Robert Ammon, along with my partner Al Huey, and we're talking with Mayor Peggy Breeden. And you guys had something you wanted to discuss. Uh, just wrapping up on economic development, because we have some other things that you want to talk about. Um, you were talking about the annexation possibility out mm -hmm. to 395. And you were saying before we went on break. That the... Um LAFCO, Local Agency Formation Commission, which is the entity that allows annexations to take place, um, ha will not allow you to do what they refer to as stovepipe annexations, which would go out the, simply down 395 and then go this way. Mm -hmm. And I'm sorry, simply down Channel Lake Boulevard and then go this yes. way. And mm -hmm. I, so I have included other opportunities in there it may not stay, it probably won't stay. In fact, the whole annexation is just simply a throw out to say, can we do this? Is there value to this? And look at it because I really want to go up, once it gets a little cooler and go knock on some doors in the, that area and see what the people who may face annexation think about it. Because clearly they're going to be the ones that will be impacted buy it yes and I want to see what they have to say and I want to see if they even have concerns or what they are and so I'm not going to do it and it's 117 degrees so I'll wait till <laughs> it's down to about 80 and then I'll walk the streets um, and see how it goes one of the things that's important is the property along uh, 395 and Channel Lake Boulevard is owned by BLM and BLM I have both uh, Mr. Spear and I have talked to them, and th they are very interested in talking to us about how we can annex that property into the city, and there are opportunities where it can come free, given some of the uh, parameters that we have to <coughs> Oh, you don't to. have to give them 50 acres for a half an acre? Oh, yeah, well, I could give my firstborn, you know, since never having children, I won't do that. Some, but. <laughs> some of the ways they've done business in the past for people that wanted property and businesses, uh, just ridiculous. There's a lot of opportunities, and and I think we, as we explore them all more fully, we'll know whether there's any validity to it. I believe there is. I think any money that brings people into this community by seeing a a gas station, a motel, a restaurant, a store, anything along there will say, oh, there might be something past that. Let's go see. Mm -hmm. And part of us, our opportunities as business people in the community is get out there and promote our locations inside One the of city. Or a motocross park like Atalanto yeah. has right yeah. there, right off of 395. Yeah, <coughs> yeah. it is. I was, I was, um, I, I, I don't limit anything, and I think everything is doable and possible if we look and see it's beneficial to us. If it isn't, there's no reason to do it. 
like I say, it was just a, I, I called it a straw man and somebody pointed out to me that a straw man was a, a way politicians put things out there to see whether they could really hide what they were trying to do. And I said, oh, I, golly gee. I, I think that's a perverted definition yeah, of straw is. man. Yes, it is. Yes, whoever <coughs> told you that, um, just scratch them off your list. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But it is an it is an something I think we need to look at, and because this community is bound by so many uh, federal lands and the Navy and, and federal lands still, we need to look at how we can grow to. And I don't know as we need another ten thousand more people in here, but I think we do need businesses, people that come in and don't cost us a lot of money as far as infrastructure well, and, that, and that's and tourists. tourism exactly <coughs> and, 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 the, and tourists only go to places that they know exist that's right and they don't know that we exist or uh, that a fun place to go I mean mm -hmm. right rich and, and, is, you and, know, and, and who was it that we had the amusement park the golf course the who was it that we had in that that said that BLM won't allow any signs anymore on their property um, well I know you can't put up new signs but yeah. you can purchase the signs that are sure. there. Be, I know they will not allow you put new, and I don't know if it's necessarily BLM, but it may have been. I know that you cannot put them up, new ones. You can, because of was, um, the uh, taking away from the natural beauty of the area and perverting it with a million signs was what I understood that to it be. Should, it seems reasonable to me. I know that that doesn't mean anything, but <coughs> that, an exemption could be made for the community. Uh, yes, you could have some, but it would be so beneficial. Just like you would have proceeded further were there a sign there saying only three more miles till you get to Ridgecrest. In fact, right? that's what I said to you all. And some of some of your listeners may not, and I know you guys are probably old enough to remember the Burma Shave signs. Yes. Oh, that, yeah. yes. And I love those. I remember when Me I too. coming coming across on Route 66 and seeing only three more miles to Indian Joe's and two yeah. more miles right. and yeah. one more mile and you'd see all these things and, and, and the Burma Shave signs that gave you things to look forward to the next sign to right. find and, out and what the joke was. No, nobody can, well, it's not reasonable to presume that those signs are that uh, obnoxious to destroying the scenery is my point. They aren't very big, but they convey a lot of information. Mm -hmm. And so we need we really need to do something, uh, w however, working with BLM or whatever, to allow that so that we can get some information out to people as they're traveling down the, the road. That there really is something worth coming to here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and there is, and not yes. just not just a tourist destination but also an opportunity for rest and to stop. Yes. You're halfway, people coming from San Diego can spend the night here on their Absolutely. way to Mammoth, on their way to Death Valley. There's a significant traffic both ways. And I think this is a, a golden opportunity for us to capture them and let them see what a beautiful place we have. And speaking of beautiful places, I think one of the things we as a community need to do is start looking at how we clean up our, how we present ourselves, how we, Gary, Ridge Project. <laughs> <laughs> I, was that on, were you on camera when you did that? Yeah. I hope so. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> how we present our community, um, the pride that we feel the community sometimes expressed well to newcomers and they come in and they see X and they see Y and they go, oh my goodness, yeah. what's with this community? And that's a, a start I want to work on next spring. And, and We need more bail bonds, uh, businesses along Charlie. Lake <laughs> what we need. We're running we're, out of time. We're running out of time. Oh, no, I want to talk about what, Rich Project. When is Economic Development Town Hall going to meet again? We have eight weeks and we are the committees Quickly. are soon. <laughs> so there you go. That's the right You've heard it from the horses and, now. And, and Peggy says she'll come back and talk with us some more. In fact, she wants to interview us. We would look forward to that. That'd be fun. 